Maturity testing of apples while they are still on the tree is one of the most valuable tools in your harvest management kit. Maturity testing can help to identify the optimum picking window for fruit, which can help with harvest labour planning. Ensuring fruit is picked at the optimum maturity will also help to determine whether the fruit is best suited for direct marketing or more suitable for short, medium or long-term storage. And importantly, picking fruit at the optimum maturity will deliver a better eating experience for consumers. This video featuring Michael Crisera from Fruit Growers Victoria provides a five-step overview showing how to conduct maturity testing in the field. So when um, collecting maturity samples, obviously it's important to get a representative of the block. So you're looking at trying to grab fruit, obviously from the top, the middle and the bottom. Um, you know, sometimes you need to grab your maturity test depending on what the growers plan to do. If, the, if they're planning to do a colour pick of gala, for example, you may have to grab the more coloured stuff. In general, you know, if you want to get one that's an overall snapshot of the block, you try and mix it up where you get it from and, and spread out your sample a bit. I would always like to take a minimum of 10 fruit when I do my maturity sampling. First thing I tend to do is some, I always grab more than 10 in the bag. Um, I tend to just use this so I don't roll around. So the first things I tend to measure is the, um, is the size. So. Uh, And the next thing I'll do is I'll measure the pressure. So now just one peel sort of each side, sort of at the fattest part of the apple. So just take one peel. This is important that you don't take too much off or not enough, because sometimes if you do take off too much peel, it'll actually be softer than, it, than what, it, what it can be. So you, important that you get a consistent you know, peel, one or two, and, and have a good peel. It's very important to have a good peeler. Okay, so now <coughs> with the penetrometer, very important that you um, make sure it's, it's fairly loose and free, not sticking, because sometimes that can impact on the on the reading that you get in, in the kilograms pressure. This is very important when you do test the pressure that you that you're quite rigid in how you put pressure on on the on the gauge, because what sometimes I see people doing it like that, and it's quite loose and it will give you the wrong reading. So it's important that you're consistent in how you do it, but you, that you've got something that you rested on or um, that, that, you, that your movement's consistent each time. There's a little line there to show you where to, how deep it needs to go into. So make sure the apple's firm, and then I, I tend to rest my hand on my stomach, sit it on the apple and push, and then when it's, I've got to the line, I then take it off, and that gives me a reading of eight and a half kilos. Write that down as you pressure one, 8.5, then you reset it to zero, flip it over, and then do, and that one's showing eight. So now we look at sugars, and what I tend to do is um, try and capture the juice on the washer, on the apple. I get my reading so at the moment it's still very early in, in the day it's about 10 bricks on that first one what i tend to do is just wipe it down to make sure there's no sugar from the last test I'll get, before I cut the fruit, I'll get it ready for the starch test. So I tend to keep the bottom half. And some people will want to keep the top if they want to do an assessment on colour as well. Right, so once I've got them laid out, that's sort of a good shot to use if you want to get it, give them an idea of their colour. Now give it about five or ten minutes. So now I'll score this by each fruit. So I'll go, um, I'll probably call that one a one. Call that a zero because I can't see any movement whatsoever. And I'd say the next one's a zero as well. This one's just starting, which I'll give it a one. That's a zero. It's a one, zero and zero, I'll say. 
it's important f for you to be able to yeah t to understand what you can do with your fruit by, the, by doing a maturity test and it just make sure that the fruit's picked at the right time depending on what you're going to do if, with it if, if you're going to store it or if you're going to direct market it uh, maturity tests will really help give you a good idea of, of getting the fruit off at optimum maturity to recap the five steps for maturity testing in the field are step one select your sample fruit take a representative sample of at least 10 fruit from each block step two measure fruit size using a sizing band or gauge step three measure fruit pressure by applying consistent even pressure and take your measurement at the fattest part of the apple a penetrometer on a stand can provide more stability if needed step four measure bricks making sure to clean the refractometer between samples step five Use a recommended iodine solution to assess starch development and then refer to a starch pattern index chart. Finally, make sure you record everything and use this data to make harvest and post-harvest decisions for this season. You can also refer back to your records in future seasons. For more information, visit the APEL website.